having electric vehicles spontaneously bursting into aggressive chemical fires that can burn down entire houses, claim lives, is really unacceptable. New York City has been rattled by more than 100 battery fires so far in 2023, and it's not just happening in New York. From January 2021 to late November 2022, the Consumer Product Safety Commission received reports of more than 200 fire and overheating incidents. To be fair, over 15 million bikes are sold in the US each year, and in 2021, e-bikes accounted for approximately 790,000 of those. So in total, there's probably at least 2 million electric bikes in the US compared to 200 electric bike fires. So even though the headlines are leading you to believe this is a growing epidemic, it's really not, but I still think it's worth talking about because of the severity of the consequences when it does happen. Risk, after all, is a combination of the probability of an event happening and the severity of the consequences. With e-bike fires, the odds are incredibly slim, but if it does happen, it can literally kill you and your entire family while you sleep at night. So let's begin with defining what a battery fire is. A lithium iron battery is flammable because lithium is highly reactive. According to my research, if lithium is in a fine enough powder, it can spontaneously combust when exposed to oxygen. Water can also make lithium catch fire. And when you combine that the fact that batteries have metal oxides within them, that means that this fire can become a self-sustaining chemical reaction even under water. Here's a video I came across of a guy throwing his battery into a pool in the hopes of quelling the fire and it doesn't work. And that's why you need a special chemical fire extinguisher to have a chance at containing these. You might have seen in some news stories that Teslas, when they occasionally catch on fire, they can burn for potentially a day plus as they slowly go through all of their self-sustaining chemical fuel. This is known as thermal runaway, where the heat from one battery cell malfunctioning can cause the cell next to it to reach that critical temperature burn, raise the temperature even more, and have that runaway process continue throughout every cell in the battery. But let's back up a little bit. Batteries are not supposed to catch fire to begin with. In fact, they are specifically designed to avoid this eventuality. And that's why even though lithium is highly combustible, battery fires are extremely rare. So the question here is, in those rare instances, what is it that causes the battery to fail so catastrophically? So here's the list of potential causes. One is physical damage, like a puncture, that could definitely cause a fire. Another factor is using low quality battery cells that do not meet quality standards. The way the battery is assembled too is also important. If they don't properly connect the battery cells together or they use a low quality BMS, which is a battery management system, that could cause a short circuit, which is another cause of damage and potential fires. Using the wrong charger is another big no-no. Uh, overcharging could potentially be an issue with low quality batteries. And finally, exposing the battery to extreme temperatures, both on the high end, the low end, and wet conditions. Now, hopefully you noticed a trend here in these risk factors. They mostly revolve around low quality, sketchy batteries. And I think that's why we see e-bikes in particular catch fire more often than say smartphones, even though the battery chemistry is the same. Companies like Samsung and Apple do not cheap out when it comes to their batteries. Most of the time, there was one instance where Samsung had an issue with exploding phones. So it definitely can happen, but with e-bikes, people like to build their own system, and because the battery is so large and expensive, the temptation to cheap out is very strong. So what can you do to mitigate the risk of this happening? As you can probably deduct from the previous risk factors, the number one actionable thing you can do is to avoid cheap, often Chinese, no-name batteries. So due to this, I would strongly avoid going on Alibaba and buying the cheapest battery you can find. And this is especially true if they're not listing clearly the brand of the batteries they're using. You want to see Samsung, LG, Monocell. Those are known high-quality battery cell providers. 
And in addition to that, you want to see a UL certification on the battery. This means the battery and the factory reaches some level of internationally recognized quality control. But from my research, most batteries on Alibaba lack both of these things. Now, once you own the battery, the way you treat it is very important to both prolong its useful lifespan, which is important if you just spent a lot of money on a quality battery, as well as reduce the risk of problems forming in the future. So basic battery care procedure includes includes storing the battery in a dry, temperate location. Definitely avoid charging the battery in direct sunlight or when it's just generally hot. And same thing goes for when it's below freezing. Don't charge a battery when it's frozen solid. Always use the proper charger. Don't charge the battery to 100% every time. If you can help it, charge to 80% that helps to reduce the stress on the battery. And in the same vein, don't fully discharge the battery. Keep at least 20% in the tank. I also recommend to only charge the battery while you can supervise it. So don't plug in your bike and go to bed or leave the house or anything like that. To further reduce the risk, you can charge the battery in a safe location. This can be outside or even in one of those fireproof battery bags. I'll go ahead and leave the one I use linked below the video. It fits most e-bike batteries, but I've also seen people charge their batteries in a grill or a fireplace something that is designed to control flames. Now, I do want to mention that damage can slowly accumulate over time while you ride the bike. For instance, every time you hit a pothole or the general shaking that occurs to the bike can slowly over time rattle and damage the battery. And for this reason, having a good full suspension bike can not only help protect you from the road, but also your battery. So with my bike here, the battery of course is high quality. I invested in a veritable charger so I can set how much of a charge I want and how fast. And we have full suspension so the battery is protected. But even so, I still charge the battery outside whenever possible. And I keep one of these close by. So to wrap up this video, there's really nothing to be overly concerned about as long as you buy a quality battery and you know the basics of battery care. So don't let the battery get wet, leave it out in extreme heat, physically damage it in any way, and you should be fine. Fingers crossed. If you found this useful, leave a like so other people can find the video, and I'll see you guys in the next one.